Now, the crisis in Ukraine is sure to overshadow the start of next week's Paralympic Winter Games in the Russian city of Sochi. But away from the flurry of diplomacy in just a few moments' time, the Paralympic heritage flame will be lit live for the very first time before passing from Britain to Russia in celebration of the Games. Let's go live now to our sports correspondent, Kamian Zerum, who's at the Stoke Mandeville Stadium. And a warning for anyone affected, there will be lots of flashing lights and pyrotechnics coming up in the next couple of minutes. Kami. Good evening, Christian, from Stoke Mandeville. You're right, tonight is a milestone in uh, Britain's role in the development of the Paralympic movement. It's the first ever international leg of a Paralympic torch relay, all to honour Stoke Mandeville, the hospital, the stadium here, as the birthplace of the movement and then from then the, uh, the games that uh, developed. Now, joining us to talk about the significance of this moment is Ting Hollingsworth, the chief executive of the British Paralympic uh, Association. And things have moved on so much, haven't they, in the last few years for the Paralympic movement and the Games themselves. Yeah, and I think we have a lot uh, to be proud of with London 2012. I think many people across the world saw that as the Paralympic Games when the, the movement really came into its own and we're looking forward not just to Sochi but the games beyond where we hope to start each one with a ceremony like this now to honour the birthplace as you say of the Paralympic movement. And if we just enjoy the show for a moment. So in the centre of that construction there, Hurricane Hannah, otherwise known as uh, Hannah Cockcroft, one of Britain's most promising Paralympians, and Tim Hollingsworth, what is she doing? Well, she's actually starting through her own endeavor, the sparks that have in turn created the flames around her. It's quite extraordinary to see her there, actually. You're right, Hannah won two golds in London. She's a real star of the athletic team in, in, uh, in sprints. And what she's there done is really the movement of her own arms, her own, her own body, is symbolizing the human endeavor and the spirit of the Games. And we can see her there passing through her endeavor, the flame to another significant person in the Paralympic movement. Yep, that's Kaz Walton. Uh, I'm delighted and proud to see her there because at the moment, Kaz is a very proud member of the British Paralympic Association, but for years, uh, she was one of our most eminent Paralympians. Her first games was back in 1964. She competed at eight in total. She won 10 gold medals as well. She's a great lady and this is a great moment. And the symbolism of the device, the armillary sphere, yeah, it's been designed, I think, particularly uh, in, with the Greek myth in mind and uh, the Greek god Hephaestus, who was known to have been disabled and known indeed to have probably created the first wheelchair. Walton there, she will pass the flame, the torch, to another promising person in Paralympic uh, history, or should I say future, Andy Barlow, who hopes to compete for Paralympics GB in the next Winter Paralympics in South Korea. Yep. And is joining us in fact in Sochi to have a look around and get used to what the Games environment is like but he's really a, a, a big hope in the Paralympic ski team, uh, looking at Pyeongchang in 2018, as you say. A quite spectacular firework display. And this Paralympic flame will be, in a moment, virtually transferred to Sochi to join with other Paralympic flames being lit around Russia at the moment.
and those flames in Russia will be unified this week on Wednesday before the opening ceremony on Friday. The Sochi 2014 Paralympic cauldron ignited. Now Andy Barlow will light the Sochi torch in effect. And that is Andy Barlow there, a future Paralympian for Paralympics GB. All things going right. And Tim, as you were saying, he will go to Sochi to experience what it's like yeah. to be a Paralympian. And he's uh, coming with us to uh, experience the Games environment. It's, of course, actually a wounded uh, serviceman. He was serving in Afghanistan when he was injured back in 2006. And he's part of a, a significant program now uh, involving the, the charity Help for Heroes. We have a good partnership with them. Which we know very well, Help yeah. for Heroes. So involved they were in producing Paralympians for 2012. Now, Tim, thank you very much. On the topic of sports, our sports reporter, Jordan Jarrett Bryan, uh, joins me now. Now, Jordan, you've been looking at the Paralympic team for Sochi. You know them well. I have, yeah. Who do you tip? Who's going to do well? Well, Paralympics GB has 15 athletes across two sports. Big hopes for the likes of Jade Etherington and her guide Caroline Powell in the alpine skiing. It's only been 30 days or so since they got back from the World Cup with a couple of medals. Competing against them are their British teammates, Kelly Gallagher and her guide Charlotte Evans. Big hopes from on the snow as well. But also finally, Eileen Nilsson, who's a skip of the wheelchair curling team and the only female skip at that level in, in, in that sport. She'll be hoping to drag her team onto the podium for a podium finish. I spoke to the guys about a month ago, and they're still hurting from a sixth place finish at the previous games in Vancouver. But hopefully all things going well, they will come back with medals. The target, I understand, between two, it's between two and, and six, five. Two and six even, so two yeah. And six. So, yeah. Jordan, thank you very much okay. indeed. Uh, back to Tim. As we've been discussing, there are political tensions uh, ratcheting up in I Russia at the moment, well, approval even yeah. that Russia could potentially send troops to Crimea, which is part of Ukraine. Are you worried this is going to impact on the Games? Well, I think being here tonight and celebrating the Paralympic Games and movement as we are, looking ahead to what will be a fantastic spectacle of sport. You know, we, half our team are already ensconced in Sochi, in the village, training and ready to compete. We are, of course, monitoring the situation. We are, of course, as we have been speaking closely with uh, government and the Foreign Office. But at the moment, we're looking ahead very much to a game where we hope our athletes will go out and do the nation proud. Tim Hollingsworth, thank you very much indeed for joining us. And that is all from Stoke Mandeville tonight for a momentous uh, occasion, the first ever international leg of a Paralympic torch ceremony to honour the role that Stoke Mandeville played in developing the Paralympic movement and the Paralympic Games ahead of the Sochi Games, which starts next Friday. Thanks, Kami.